All right, class, today we're going to go over introduction paragraphs in our persuasive series. So let's get started. Now, the purpose of an introductory paragraph is twofold. It lets the reader know what you're going to be talking about, and it also grabs their attention. So therefore, it is pretty important. If you don't get their attention at the beginning, good luck getting them to continue reading your essay. So now there's uh, three things that you have to worry about for an introduction, and here's the formula. Hook, a line, and a sinker. All the hook statement is is just an attention grabber. That's what grabs their attention. The line is the bridge. It provides any extra information needed for them to understand the topic. And then your sinker we'll get into in a minute. So first off, let's look at some ways to use a hook statement. So your beginning sentence. You have a couple options. Unusual detail, strong statement, quotation, anecdote, or question. Unusual detail and strong statement are going to require you to know information about your topic before you get started. So an unusual detail, obviously, that's something that people would not likely know about your subject. If you give them something strange that sticks in their brain and forces them to keep reading. Similarly, with a strong statement, it's a bold fact or belief. So it's, a, it's not necessarily unusual, but it's your belief about the subject that gets their attention. With a quotation, and this is why you might want to be looking into that box that they provide on the prompt for either the fact or the quotation, it is a phrase from an expert to lend your paper credibility, which is definitely needed. There's anecdote, which is a short personal story that is related to the topic. And finally, you have the ability to do a question, which is an open-ended rhetorical question. Therefore, it should not be a simple yes or no. It must make the reader think. So here are some examples. Going on our thesis, or not our thesis, but rather our prompt that we've talked about throughout these videos, we have that write an essay stating your position on whether it's better to live in a large city or in a small town. So for a strong statement, if we have a fact, something we know about that information, we can put something like large cities provide you lots of options but at a great risk. Now, do we tell them what that risk is right away? No, that's something we might want to say for the thesis statement. Quotation. Using that information from that box from that prompt, we can easily state, Joseph Brodsky said, What I like about cities is that everything is king size, the beauty and the ugliness. The thing when it comes to quotations and strong statements, your next sentence needs to explain them. Now, notice the uh, model for quotation. Say the person's name, then say said before you use the quote. Next up, here's an example of an anecdote. That means a short personal story, so keep it no more than two sentences at the most. When I lived in Dallas 10 years ago, I had to get up at 4 a.m. in order to make it to school on time. Traffic was that bad. And then we have a question. What would you do if you were faced with the decision to sleep in or get up extremely early to make it to school on time? Now, let's look at the line. A line is the bridge. That means you uh, connect the topic of the hook and the sinker. Typically, that can either be a definition or it provides background details a reader needs on the topic before you move on. So let's look at a couple of examples based on the hooks that we've already created. For the strong statement, well, we've already stated about the risk. So being in a location with places such as restaurants and entertainment may not be worth the trouble you will face. Once again, we're not giving them the trouble yet. That's what we'll save for our thesis and supporting paragraphs. But we explain what they can get out of it. So going to places. With a quotation, as soon as you finish the quotation, the next sentence needs to state, this means that. This means that while there may be vast amounts of beauty in a city, there's also plenty of problems too. And since our original thesis statement stated it was better to live in a small town, notice I put this in little marks here in order to uh, provide sarcasm. A couple other examples. For anecdote, now that I live in a smaller town, I have begun to enjoy the ability to sleep. So that gives the reader a hint as to what you're going to be leaning towards. And with a question, you don't want to answer the question, but you do want to provide a little bit of background information. Why do we need that question? The ability to peacefully sleep may be a deciding factor on whether to live in a small town or large city. So now we explain why we were even asking the question. Next up, we have the sinker. 
Now, the reason why I haven't talked about this yet, because very simply, the sinker is just your thesis statement, and we've already gone over that. So you should know the formula for a thesis statement. That would be the third sentence of your lovely introduction paragraph. Obviously, that means your intro paragraph is only three sentences long. That's it. Hook, line, and sinker. That's all you need to get started on your essay because you need to spend the bulk of your uh, space on the supporting paragraphs. So in conclusion, remember, your hook statement is the attention grabber. There are a few ways to, use, to uh, get that attention. My favorites are the quotation or strong fact, strong statement. Those are usually my favorites. A line bridges the topics of the two, of both your thesis, which is your sinker, and your hook. So the main topic of both needs to be presented and explained, usually by definition, in your line. And then, of course, just don't forget, your thesis is your sinker. So hook, line, sinker. That's all we need for introduction paragraphs. All right, see you tomorrow in class where we'll be working on an assignment of introduction paragraphs.